Hey, did you know we got a secret message from 66 million years ago? A message written in stone. A cataclysm so huge it left a scar on our planet forever. Welcome to the Cretaceous. Let's go back. It's hard to imagine life before leaves crunching underfoot. The bees buzzing lazily around you as you take a refreshing sip from the stream. But during the Cretaceous period, 145 to 66 million years ago, these scenes were unimaginable. No trees existed yet. Instead, the land was covered in ferns, horsetails, and strange relatives of conifers called cycads. But the Cretaceous ended long before the first oak tree sprouted. How? Well, let me tell you, let's start at the beginning. The Cretaceous was the last period of the Mesozoic era, which began when the supercontinent Pangaea broke apart 200 million years ago. This era was the golden age of dinosaurs, and during the Cretaceous they came in all shapes and sizes. My favorites are the feathered ones like Velociraptor. Hey, I can fly, but okay, not exactly. During the late Cretaceous, feathered dinosaurs roamed the planet, evidence that many dinosaurs grew feathers to attract mates and keep warm in cold weather. Perhaps the most famous feathered dinosaur is Archaeopteryx. In Latin, Archaeopteryx means ancient wing. Fossils have shown that it had both reptile and bird characteristics, such as teeth, a long, bony tail, and feathers. Studying fossils like Archaeopteryx helps scientists learn about the evolution of birds and how they are related to dinosaurs. But let's talk about other dinosaurs. Meet Gigantophus garstini. This King Cobra relative lived during the Cretaceous and reached lengths of more than 6 meters. That's longer than a doorway. In 2021, researchers used advanced imaging techniques to peer inside a fossilized skull from Peru. They discovered that Gigantophus had hollow fangs connected to poison glands. So they didn't just bite you, they spit venom too. I think I need to sit down. Back in the seas, Archelon was queen. At 3 meters long and weighing 2,000 kilograms, it was the largest sea turtle that ever lived. Imagine stepping out of your kayak and seeing one of those gliding past. You probably wouldn't stick around to find out. Fortunately, we don't live in the time of Archie Longus. These days, you're more likely to find them as fossils. One fossil of Archie Longus was found in 1909 in the coastal town of Agujita, California. It was named for the place where it was found, but also because its shell was so big it was arch-shaped. While Archelon was busy ruling the waves, weird animals were everywhere else. What did a terror bird look like? It's a good question since it wasn't very bird-like. Terror birds were flightless predatory birds that lived in New Zealand between 23 million and 14 million years ago. Despite being unable to fly, they stood up to 3.6 meters tall. And unlike their distant relatives who had beaks, terror birds had massive hooked bills like those of condors or eagles. They also had extremely long hind legs, making them faster runners than Usain Bolt. Scientists believe that instead of flying, terror birds used their size and strength to chase after prey across the ground, much like ostriches do today. They probably also used their large size and strength to defend themselves against predators. Okay, but it gets weirder. Enter the Mola Mola. The Mola Mola was an amphibious mammal that lived in North America and Europe during the Eocene Epoch. Yes, the Eocene. It was a semi-aquatic mammal with webbed feet and a long rat-like tail. And here's the weird part, it breathed air through its skin. The mole was an important part of the food chain. It was preyed upon by larger animals such as crocodiles and birds. So far, we've only scratched the surface of the bizarre beasts that lived during the Cretaceous. There were countless others, each stranger than the last. We will continue to uncover more about the animals that once roamed our Earth and learn about the amazing adaptations they had to survive in a world that was constantly changing. Who knows what other secrets the fossil record holds? But let's move away from the animals and talk about the landscape. The Cretaceous was a time of great change and upheaval. Continents moved, climates shifted, 
and new species evolved. But perhaps the most significant event was the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea. This event led to the formation of the Atlantic Ocean and the isolation of the Americas, Africa and Europe, Asia and Australia. This separation had profound implications for the distribution of plants and animals across the globe. As the continents drifted apart, populations of species became isolated from one another, leading to the evolution of new and unique species on each continent. For example, the ancestors of modern mammals originated in Pangaea. But after the breakup, different groups of mammals evolved separately in North and South America, giving rise to the diverse array of mammalian species we see today. Now, let's turn our attention to the climate of the Cretaceous. The planet was generally warmer than it is today, with average global temperatures estimated to have been about 5 degrees higher than today. This warmth allowed tropical plants to thrive in areas that are now too cold to support them. For example, the lush rainforests of the Amazon and Congo basins were home to a wide variety of plant and animal life, including many species that are now extinct. However, towards the end of the Cretaceous, the climate began to cool, which may have contributed to the extinction of the dinosaurs. So, let's jump back to the animals. Let's talk about some of the strangest and most fascinating creatures that roamed the Earth. First, we have to mention the terrible lizard. The terrible lizard is a relative of the modern-day Tuatara, a reptile that is found only in New Zealand. The terrible lizard lived in what is now North America during the Cretaceous period and was named for its fearsome appearance. Its head was flattened from side to side, and it had a large, rough tongue and powerful jaws filled with sharp teeth. Despite its name, the terrible lizard was not a carnivore, but rather a herbivore that fed on plants. Next, we have the Mosasaurus. The Mosasaurus was a large marine reptile that lived during the Cretaceous period. It was a type of ichthyosaur, which means fish lizard in Greek. Mosasaurs were well adapted for life in the water with a streamlined body, powerful tail, and paddle-like limbs. They were also equipped with sharp teeth and a large mouth, which they used to feed on fish and other marine animals. One of the most famous mosasaurs is the Tylosaurus. It was one of the largest known marine reptiles reaching lengths of up to 15 meters. Finally, let's talk about Smilodon, the saber-toothed cat. Smilodon was a genus of saber-toothed cat that lived in the Americas during the Pleistocene epoch. It was one of the largest and most powerful felines that ever lived, with a massive head, long fangs, and a muscular body. Smilodon was a skilled hunter, preying on large mammals such as bison and horses. These are just a few of the many strange and wonderful animals that lived during the Cretaceous period. Each of these creatures was perfectly adapted to its environment and played a vital role in the ecosystem. You might be thinking, where are the mammals? To answer that question, let's explore a little more. During the Cretaceous period, mammals were small proto-wombats, mostly nocturnal, living in the shadow of the dinosaurs. Their skulls were small, delicate, and lightly built, with thin enamel on their teeth. Compared to the giant beasts around them, they were inconspicuous and vulnerable, but their brain size was increasing rapidly. Some scientists estimate that the brain of a primitive primate from that era was as much as five times larger than that of its close relatives. This meant that mammals were becoming smarter and more adaptable, setting the stage for their eventual dominance. Then, almost as if the Earth itself knew it was overdue for a change, everything changed. It happened suddenly and violently. A massive asteroid or comet hurtled towards Earth and crashed into the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. The impact was catastrophic. Dust and debris were thrown into the atmosphere, blocking the sun and plunging the planet into darkness. Earthquakes shook the Earth and tsunamis ravaged the coastlines. The asteroid impact triggered a chain reaction of events that led to the extinction of the dinosaurs and many other species but it also paved the way for the rise of mammals. Without the dinosaurs to compete with them, mammals were free to diversify and thrive. Today, there are over 5,000 species of mammals alive on Earth, 
They come in all shapes and sizes, from tiny shrews to blue whales. And it's all thanks to the extinction event that cleared the way for them to evolve. As we reflect on the Cretaceous, we are reminded of the power of nature and the interconnectedness of all life on Earth. From the smallest mammal to the largest dinosaur, each species played a role in shaping our planet's history. And while some species are gone, their legacy lives on in the fossils they left behind and in the DNA of the species that evolved from them. So the next time you look up at the stars, remember that our planet has seen a lot of change over the past 66 million years. And who knows what the future may hold.